What's going on everyone? It's Ryan with Hertz Labs here. Today we're going to be going over a optimization guide for Windows to achieve smooth gaming. For the first part of this guide, we're going to be creating a restore point. Go ahead and search create a restore point and we are going to create a new one and we can name it whatever you'd like. So we'll just say restore point. All right, now we can make a bunch of changes, and if we do anything we don't like, we can always roll it back to how our system was before we made these changes. All right, so we can go ahead and close out of system properties. All right, for the first part of this guide, we're gonna be choosing a Windows power plan. So go ahead and hit your Windows icon and search choose, and the best match should show up, choose a power plan. The window that pops up here lists off balance, high performance, and power saver. Um, I'll show you a little trick here to get ultimate performance. Um, depending on your computer, uh, it's up to you whether or not you want to enable this on it. Um, most people are just going to want to run high performance, but you could also try getting ultimate performance and test it out. Um, if you run into instability, just bump it down to high performance and you should be good to go. So to enable ultimate performance on your computer, right click your start menu, select Windows PowerShell Admin, select yes, type this into your terminal and hit enter. I already have mine, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up. Once you have this, you can just select ultimate performance and you should be all set. If you do have a Ryzen processor, I would switch in between the AMD power plans and the ultimate performance power plans and see which one works best for you. Next, we can adjust the performance of Windows. So go ahead and search adjust and the best match should show up, adjust the appearance and performance of Windows. Go ahead and click on this. Um, you'll see this window pop up. We're basically going to select adjust for best performance. I like to leave uh, show thumbnails instead of icons and smooth edges of screen fonts and then hit apply and OK. Now we're going to be heading to our task manager and looking at the processes that are running on our computer. Uh, you can right click uh, down at the bottom of your screen and select task manager. You can alternatively search task manager and enter it that way. You see here. This shows us the processes that are running on our system. You basically want to go through this list and make sure there's nothing running on your system that you don't necessarily need. So whether that's a forgotten software that you don't really use anymore, or maybe um, a Java updater, really the list can go on forever. It's kind of up to your discretion to um, uninstall things and remove things that you don't need. Next, we can head to Startup Apps. This will list off all of the software that runs on your computer when it boots up. You basically want to disable anything that you don't need here. You can do this by right-clicking and disabling. We can also double-check our Startup Apps by searching in Windows Startup, clicking on this, and then this will list off something similar to what you saw before. Just make sure nothing's enabled that you don't need. Next, we're going to go to Uninstalling and Removing Programs. So basically, you're going to want to remove anything that you don't need anymore, um, whether that's unnecessary software or games you no longer play. You can uninstall an app by clicking the three dots, click uninstall, and just go through the uninstallation process. All right, you can close out of installed apps. Now just go ahead and hit Windows plus R. It will bring up this run. You will type percent sign temp percent sign. Hit OK. This is going to load up a bunch of temporary files. We can hit control A and then right click delete and can delete everything in here and we can hit skip if it cannot close the file. Next we can search in Windows delete and we're going to delete temporary files. So once you're here go ahead and click on temporary files. You can see it lists off a bunch of different items here. Uh, we're basically going to delete the recycling bin. I like to keep my downloads. I also like to keep my thumbnails, but everything else is pretty much good to go. You can also uh, uncheck the DirectX shader cache, um, but I like to reload these um, every so often. Then once you have everything selected that you'd like checked, you're going to remove files and we're all set. You can close out of this. Next, we're going to check for Windows updates. You can just search check for updates in your Windows search bar. Looks like I'm up to date, but I'm going to go ahead and click on the button. Looks like it found one. It's installing it. You just want to install this and restart if it needs to. All right, once you're all set here, you can close out of this. All right, next we're going to be checking for graphics drivers updates. We can do this by opening GeForce Experience, clicking on drivers in the top left, and checking for updates. You can see we have another update ready to go, so we can go ahead and download this. 
All right, once your download is ready, you can choose Express Installation. Click Yes, and it'll install your graphics driver. All right, once your installation is complete, you can go ahead and close out of GeForce Experience. All right, so now we're going to verify we're using the full refresh rate of our monitor. We can do this by typing in Display. We can go to Advanced Display and then verify that we are using the highest refresh rate available on our monitor. Once you've selected the highest refresh rate, you can close out of the settings. At this step, you should also Google if your monitor has any performance settings that you can change on the monitor itself. Um, usually this is through an on-screen display and you can change things like the power mode that it's on and also input response as well. Next, we wanna make sure we're disabling all in-game overlays. So. To do this in Steam, you can open up Steam. And once you have Steam opened up, you can open up the settings. You're gonna head over to in-game in the bottom left, and you're going to disable the Steam overlay while in-game. Close out of Steam. You may need to do this for whatever game launcher you use. Um, also, Discord has an in-game overlay that you can disable, as well as various other things. So just double check that the software that's running on your computer doesn't have an overlay running. Next, we're going to be checking mouse acceleration, so go ahead and open up Windows Search and type in mouse settings. Open this up, and we're going to go to additional mouse settings, and we're going to pointer options. And we're going to make sure enhanced pointer precision is unchecked. The reason you want to have this unchecked is basically if you do have it checked, um, it can make your mouse input feel a little inconsistent. Basically, the faster you move the mouse, the more distance your cursor travels, and the slower you move the mouse, the less distance your cursor travels. So, um, a lot of people have a hard time getting used to this. It's easiest just to uncheck it so you have a smooth and consistent mouse input feeling. All right, we can close out of this now. Next, we're gonna be enabling game mode. You can just go ahead and search game in Windows settings and click on game mode settings and we can make sure this is checked on. Game mode basically optimizes your computer by turning off background processes. All right, for the next step, you can just go ahead and search graphics in your Windows search bar. And here, we just wanna make sure that the game that you're playing is selected and you have high performance enabled. You can also alternatively browse for the app that you're looking for just have to find the directory and file location that it's hosted at. All right, next we can open up NVIDIA control panel. We're basically gonna tweak some settings in here to make it performance oriented. All right, so once you have your NVIDIA control panel open, go over to manage 3D settings and you can copy over these settings here. Feel free to pause the video whenever you need to check it out. Depending on your monitor, you may or may not have this listed. Um, if you do, you should probably look into utilizing G-Sync. Um, some people like it, some people don't, but I play with G-Sync on. All right, so once you have all your settings changed, you're gonna to wanna to apply and you can close out of NVIDIA control panel. All right, now we are going to cap our frames the correct way. I know you can do this a number of different ways, but I've found the best way for uh, frame pacing is through a software called RTSS. Just open up an internet browser and search RTSS. Once you have the page loaded, you can download whichever version you'd like. Uh, they pretty much work the same right now. All right, once your download is complete, you can show it in the folder and you're going to need to extract it. And once you have it extracted, go ahead and run the application. I already have it running, so I'm going to go ahead and open it up. Uh, basically, you want to set the frame rate limit to about two frames lower than whatever your monitor's refresh rate supports. This is super helpful with frame pacing. It makes a really, really smooth and optimized feeling in game. There's a lot of people that run uncapped frames in games, and that's fine. But uh, generally speaking, the way to get the most consistent feeling in a game is to cap your frame rate at a frame rate you can actually achieve. So whether this is 144 or 60 hertz or 280 hertz, 
Uh, really, it's going to be um, unique to you, but just figure out whatever you need to be running it at, and you can sort of play around with it and see what feels the best to you. So I'm not going to make a guide on how to change the in-game settings of games. Um, you can look up the game that you play and look up a performance-optimized guide um, and change them there. Um, I hope you found something in this video useful. Please let me know your results down in the comments, and thank you very much for watching.